Hello, uh, I'm going to be showing everyone the Delta uh, Checkers robot that we made for the Cornell Info 4320 uh, rapid prototyping class project. Uh, we're going to be showing you the general design that we have here as well as it in action and then we're going to be setting up a few little scenarios to show you some other things that we've implemented. So uh, the beginning design uh, goals for our project were making a robotic arm, robotic hand, uh, that's capable of playing checkers. Um, so this involves both the mechanical construction as well as the software project that we're running on the computer. Um, the delta configuration refers to how the robot arm is set up. So in this case we have um, an end effector here which is made of a 3D printed piece. Uh, and a wooden piece up here that is a combination of a laser cut piece of plywood uh, with a saw to finish it off. And the way the Delta robot configuration works is we have three servos uh, on the top here which are connected <clears throat> in a very specific manner to this piece of wood such that the points on the servos that the arms are attached to, uh, the rotating points, are on the midpoints of an equilateral triangle that is formed uh, by connecting them. Uh, it's very important that they're like that uh, because the side length of that equilateral triangle uh, is one of the main factors, variables, that goes into the calculation uh, to be able to move the hand around. Uh, on the bottom we also have a smaller equilateral triangle where the midpoints of the sides are uh, the middle of the arm connections here. Uh, and both by 3D printing this piece at the bottom and laser cutting the piece at the top, we were able to get those uh, with pretty high precision. And uh, those two uh, measurements, along with the lengths of the pieces of the arms, um, both the top section and the bottom section, are the four main variables that go into uh, the calculations that are able to change both the XYZ position of the end effector and the theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3 servo rotation angle positions. Uh, we can go both forwards and backwards to uh, give either angles to get an XYZ position or an XYZ position to get angles. Uh, for the most part uh, in this project, we want to be picking up or putting down checkers, and so we're going from XYZ positions to theta positions. <coughs> uh, the general method of the software program is that there's a webcam here uh, and the robot is able to move out of the way when it's not its turn and it enables the webcam to have a good view of the board um, which you'll notice that while we do have red and black checkers our board is very pale colors just white and a kind of uh, off yellow there uh, and that enables us to use HSV values um, mainly the hue uh, at this point uh, to be able to determine what pieces on the board are red uh, versus black. Now we use the OpenCV computer vision program uh, to help us with that. And while we have an Arduino system here, um, on the computer we have uh, kind of a similar program processing, uh, which is where the actual algorithm is being run. Uh, these programs uh, are communicating with each other over serial. Um, we have a custom uh, method of communication where the computer is sending out an XYZ and a magnet on or off position. Uh, the magnet on or off corresponds to our end effector again here. We have an electromagnet uh, that's placed inside the end effector and it enables us uh, to pick up the checkers where the checkers have a hole drilled in the bottom of them and a small rare earth magnet placed on the inside. Um, that enables them to both be picked up by the end effector and to stick to each other uh, for cane. The power of the magnets here is uh, small enough such that they don't interact with each other uh, when they're just next to each other on the board, but strong enough that you can pick up multiple together like that. And that enables the robot hands to move them around two at a time or one at a time depending on what's needed. <clears throat> You'll also notice that we have a string that's coming out from our end effector. That was one of the later additions to our project. Um, <clears throat> on the back here we have a counterweight, which is approximately a uh, similar weight to the end effector and the electromagnet. Um, and that helps take some of the strain off of the servos as uh, it comes up here, goes at a right angle over the top of our wood base and then down to the uh, counterweight. And so while that is pulling up at the same way that this is pulling down, it helps the servos not have to hold it at quite uh, the, you know, the same position that it would have normally. Uh, and this helps us because when we need to reset the program or change something and the servos temporarily lose power, 
we don't have the end effect of falling into the game board. So I think without further ado, we can uh, turn it on and show everyone uh, how it works. Basically, the user moves first, then they hit this very large red button here, which I'm sure society has taught us all we shouldn't be hitting a big red button. Uh, but in this case, that's how the user tells the computer that uh, it's its turn. Uh, we also have a little bit of an indicator LED light over here, where green is the user and blue is uh, the robot computer. So, uh, if we would like to have our user here uh, make a move, and then we can hit the button and just show what the robot does. And while we could continue in this vein for quite a while, uh, we are going to set up uh, for you a little bit more uh, interesting scenarios. As you can see, we did just have a double jump there. Um, the robot is set up right now to take advantage of any you know, weakness on the player's part and make a jump if it can. Um, it then places the captured pieces over here as if there was another row uh, and keeps track of what's there so that if it ever detects uh, one of the user's pieces getting to this back row, it's capable of taking one of these and king it. That's what we're going to take a look at next. So we're now going to show, uh, this is a little bit later on in the game, um, the computer has these captured pieces here and the user has just gotten this piece to the end, so we're showing it. Okay. The first thing it does is it kings the opposing player's piece and then performs its own move and gets out of the way so that he was a convert. Uh, we're now showing you one last scenario where the robot has just gotten the king and it's now going to take advantage of the king's new ability to move backwards and forwards uh, to make one last double jump here.